Hello and welcome to DirectX 11 tutorial 6. In this tutorial we are going to cover creating a mouse class, just like how we had made the keyboard class in the last tutorial. So first I'd like to go ahead and create the filters and headers and CPPs at the beginning. So we're going to add a new filter for mouse. We're going to do that under source files as well. We're going to add a new header file for the mouse class. We're going to call this mouse class. We're going to add a new header file for the mouse events. We're going to call this mouse event. We're going to add a new CPP for mouse class. And we're going to add a new CPP for mouse event. Now let's go and create a folder for these source files. So at the top right, we're going to check show all files. We're going to create a new folder. We're going to call this mouse. And let's drag the source files that we just created up to this mouse folder. All right, and now we can uncheck show all files. First, let's go to our mouse event header. Now we declared a struct uh, for mouse point, and this is just to be used if we are uh, retrieving the actual position of the mouse, we need to get back the X and the Y. For our mouse event class, we have quite a few event types. We have if they press the left mouse, if they release it, if they press the right mouse, if they release that. The middle mouse button, if they press or release that. If they scroll their mouse wheel up or down. If they move their mouse. If there is a raw input move. And if there is the invalid default event type. Now in this tutorial we are not going to cover raw input. We will actually get into that in the next tutorial. But it, we might as well go ahead and put the event type in right now. So in our private variables we have the event type the X position and Y position. We have our default constructor, our constructor that takes the event type and the positions. We have a Boolean function that returns if it's valid, an event type function to get the event type, the mouse point uh, struct that we had made earlier to get the position, and then if we just want to get the X or Y position we have functions for that as well. Let's go ahead and implement these definitions. So go to the mouse event CPP. Alright, we have our default constructor with an invalid event type. We have the constructor that takes in the arguments and sets them. Our is valid just returns if it's not invalid. Get type returns a type. Get pose uh, returns that struct with the x and y positions. And then we have get pose x and get pose y. So it's very straightforward. Let's go into the mouse class header. There's going to be a lot uh, more to the mouse class. Alright, so first we are including our mouse event header so we can use mouse events. Then we are including queue because the mouse class will have an event queue just like how the keyboard class had. Our window proc will call these functions for if they left click, uh, release left click, right click, release right click, etc. Is left down, is middle down, and is right down will check uh, if one of those are true. And Regarding that, for the is left down and is middle down and is right down, these, you don't need an event to check these, right? You can just call these and see at any time if this is true. And it's the same with get pose x and get pose y and get pose. You can call these at any time, regardless of the event going on. Then we have to check if the event buffer is empty and to actually read the events. Here's where we have our queue uh, for our event buffer. And then we have our variables for uh, the current position and which buttons are pressed. So now let's get into implementing these definitions. Let's go to the mouse class CPP. Alright, so all of our on functions will be called by our window proc. And as you can see, if if they left click, we'll, pa we'll call this and we'll pass in the X and Y positions. And in our mouse class, we will set left is down to true. We will create a mouse event for this event, and we will push it into our buffer. 
This is just like how we had the keyboard class set up. If you see, we just had this for all of our different events. And if we go down past the on functions, we have events for checking if left is down, middle is down, or right is down. And these can be called at any time. It has nothing to do with if an event's in the buffer or not. It's the same with get pose x and y, and then just get pose to get the struct back. Then we can check if the event buffer is empty. And for read event, they should never call it if the event buffer is empty, but if for some reason you call it, when the event buffer is empty, you will get back the invalid mouse event. And if it's not empty, we will just get the event at the front of the queue. We will remove that from the queue by popping it, and then return that event. So let's go up to our window container header, and we need to add the include for this. Our mouse class, and then let's add the member. So now if we go to our window container CPP, we need to modify the window proc for the, um, for the mouse messages. So that's the keyboard messages that we had. After char, let's make our mouse messages. I'm just going to indent that back. Okay. All right, so first let's take care of the mouse move event. Now we need to figure out how we're going to get the coordinates for these events. So let's take a look at the documentation. The documentation states that in the L param, the low order word specifies the X coordinate and the high order word specifies the Y coordinate. So what we can do so we can get the x coordinate by calling low word and passing in the L param. We can get the y coordinate by doing high word, passing in the L param. Now what we can do is we can call on mouse move and pass in this x and this y. So before we get into implementing all of the other uh, events, let's go ahead and test this out. So we need to go to our engine CPP update. We're going to say while the mouse event buffer is not empty, let's get the event, I'm going to call it me, since mouse event is an M and an E. And I'm just going to output the uh, position. All right, and this should just read in the event and uh, build a string with the X and Y positions. So let's test this out, see what we get. All right, so you see when I'm moving my mouse not in the window, I don't get anything. But when I move it inside of the window, I am getting uh, the updated message. I forgot to put in a new line. Go ahead and add that just so we can see it more clearly. All right, and you see at the very top we are at zero, zero, and then since my dimensions are 800 by 600, we get 800 by 600. Or will we get around that uh, later on when we actually render something, we'll get into why the Y position only goes up to 560 and why the X position only goes up to um, 700, around 789. But for now, this is right, and it's getting our positions how we need it. So I'm going to take out that test code, and let's look into implementing the other events. So back to our window container CPP. So these events are pretty much the same layout. So I just copied and pasted them, and we'll do a quick review. We have the left button down, and we are just getting the low word and high word to get the X and Y positions, and then passing that to on left press. Right button down, middle button down, left button up, right button up, middle button up. So those are all exactly the same. Now if we go back to our mouse class header, there was one more thing that we needed to account for. And this one works a little bit different. This is the on wheel up and on wheel down events. 
So that's just, you know, if you're scrolling your mouse up or down. So let's go back over here. And the way that this one works is we get the X and Y position for where they're doing it the same way. However, to get the um, how much the mouse wheel has changed, we uh, have to call get wheel delta W param on the W param. And if it's greater than zero, then you know that means they're scrolling the mouse up. So we would pass it to on wheel up. And if it's less than zero, then we would pass that to on wheel down. So the last thing we're going to do is we're just going to test that out and make sure it's functioning right. Let's go back to the engine CPP. We're going to say if me get type let's see wheel up. Alright, and if they do a mouse wheel down, we are going to print mouse wheel down. So let's test this out. So if I scroll my mouse wheel up, I get up, and if I scroll it down, I get down. And even when your mouse is not on the screen, you see it's still, or when it's not on your window, it still processes that. So that's all that we are going to cover for this tutorial. In the next one, we are going to get into uh, raw mouse input and why we would want to use raw mouse input and then I guess after that we will finally get into initializing DirectX.